I'm going to show you how to do some interest rate calculations of uh, yield curves from scratch. So let's start out with uh, time. And we're just going to use five years or five periods for this example because everything else is going to be exactly the same uh, no matter how many time periods you had. Now we'll assume in this first example that we're starting with forward rates. And those forward rates, we'll just make them up, say, 4%, 4 percent, 4.5 percent, 4.75 percent, 4.9 percent, and 5 percent. So what we have there is a forward curve that is upwardly sloping, and it's just sort of moderately upwardly sloping. Now the first thing we're going to calculate are the so-called discount factors. And what the discount fact, first discount factor looks like is just equal to 1 divided by 1 plus the interest rate. Now in later examples we'll get fancier, but this is just fine for now. To get the second discount factor, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first discount factor, and we're going to divide by 1 plus this interest rate. So the second discount factor, the meaning of it is if I had a cash flow of 1 at the end of year 2, its present value would be 92 cents, just like the present value of the cash flow at the end of year 1 would be 96 cents. Now I can simply take this uh, formula that's in cell C C3 and just copy it across and we get all the discount factors. So for example, this last one, 7975, which is about 0.8, that says if you wanted a cash flow that comes at the end of year 5, a cash flow of 1, then the value you'd have to pay for it up front today would be about 80 cents. What we're going to need next are the so-called annuity discount factors. And the first one is simply equal to the first discount factor. So that's the present value of a cash flow of 1 that comes at the end of year 1. But the next one is going to be equal to the first one plus the second one. So the meaning of that, 1.88, is if you want to have a cash flow of 1 at the end of year 1 and another one at the end of year 2, then you'd have to pay 1.88 up front today uh, to get that. Now we can simply take this formula and copy it across to the rest. So for example, the last one, 4.39, that's how much you would have to pay today to receive an annuity, that's why they call it the annuity discount factor, to receive an annuity of one every year for the next five years. That is a cash flow of one that comes at the end of year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. Okay, now what do we do with those? Well, first thing we can do is we can calculate zero rates. That is the single interest rate that will apply over the entire period of time. Remember these forward rates, this 4% goes from now until the end of year one, the 4.5% goes from the end of year 1 to the end of year 2. So uh, the first zero rate would be the same as the forward rate, but I'm going to calculate it a little bit differently. I'm going to calculate it as being equal to uh, 1 divided by the discount factor raised to 1 divided by the number of periods minus 1. All right, let's do that and talk about it. Now, obviously, I got back to the same answer. Now, why is that? All I did was I decompounded this discount factor, took 1 over it that essentially gave me 1 plus the interest rate because raising it to this power of 1 over 1 didn't do anything. But it gave me 1 plus the interest rate, so I had to subtract 1. The reason I did it is because the formula is the same in all the rest of the cells. I'm just going to copy them across. Now, they look like, they look a little weird because they look like they're all, almost all the same, but that's because of the uh, formatting. So let's try formatting them a little bit better. Let's increase the number of decimal places so you can see they're actually different. Now, this four and a quarter, what is that? That's a rate that applies from year zero, that is from today, until the end of year two. So whereas this 4.5% up here only went from the end of year 1 to the end of year 2, 4.25% is a zero rate that starts today and goes to the end of year 2. 
Now it looks like it's just a simple average between four and four and a half percent, but if I were to increase the precision of that, you'd see it wasn't really exactly that because interest rates don't quite average out that way. They're not simple linear averages. Now I'll go back to just having two decimal places because that's good enough. So these are our zero rates. So again, the meaning of the one for year five is that if we wanted to have an interest rate that started today and went to the end of year five, that single interest rate would be 4.63 percent. So that's an annually compounded interest rate. <clears throat> what we'll calculate next are the PAR coupons. Now uh, again, the PAR coupon is going to be the same as the zero for year one and the same as the forward, but I'm going to use a different formula for it because the formula will be the same for all the rest of them. And that's going to be one minus the year one discount factor divided by the annuity discount factor. And that's going to tell us the rate on a PAR bond. And again, it's, you know, it's going to be 0.04. Uh, and, but, however, the formula is exactly the same for the rest of them, so I'm just going to copy it across. So, for example, looking at the one for year five, what that says is, if you want to have a par bond, that is a bond that is worth 100 today, but will give you a constant cash flow every year for the next five years, then the correct cash flow is 0.046, about 4.6%. And I'll just take the formatting here, and I'll copy it across there so you can see what it looks like. So now what we have is our forward curve, that's what we started with. We calculated the zero curve and the par curve. Now uh, we probably have, like to have a, a look at these, so I'm just going to do a little graph. So forward, zero, and par. And this is just going to be equal to this one. And this equals zero and this one equals par and then I can just copy those across and then to make the graph I'll just select this whole thing here I'll insert uh, a uh, line graph uh, like that's good enough and you can see it's got all them on it so you can sort of see it but it isn't formatted very well, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the uh, layout and I'm going to look at, let's say, the uh, vertical axis and we really uh, only go from a 4% rate up to about a 4 point, up to a 5% rate, so why don't I just make this um, go from uh, 0.04 for to well we could try 0.05 that's probably that's probably okay like that that gives us a better looking curve I see I really should have made the formatting of this the same here so let's go back and give those two decimal points as well they look better okay now uh, we could probably dress this up a little bit better so once again let's uh, select the graph and go back to uh, layout and let's do uh, the primary horizontal axis and let's have a little uh, no I think we'll just leave that what I really want to do is I want to put a title on that axis so below, I'm going to put a title below the axis and I'm going to call that as you would guess time and then we should probably uh, put a title on the chart as well so let's um, put it above the top and we'll say the yield curve that looks pretty good so now we can see what we've got here is we have the forward curve which uh, starts out at a 4% rate and goes up to 5. Then we've got uh, the uh, zero rate, that's the red line, and then we have the par curve. Now the, 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 the zero curve, of course, is upwardly sloping because the fours are upwardly sloping. 
it's below the forward curve because zero rates are essentially averages of forwards. So that means that every point on the zero curve has to be uh, below the larger one and above the smaller one because it's an average of them. And then the par curve is a little bit like an average of, four, of zeros and therefore it has to lie somewhat below the, z below the zero curve. But you can see there isn't so much of a difference. Anyway, just to review what we've done in this little segment, to show you how you can start with the forward curve and very simply calculate uh, the zero curve and the par curve from it. So this just reinforces the fact that once you have the forward curve, the other two curves are completely determined. In another unit, I'll show you how to start with one of the others and work backwards towards uh, the other two as well.